Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am in beautiful San Francisco. I can say that because I am in the part of San Francisco. Cisco, Cisco. I'm in Palo Alto and it's absolutely stunning. I need to go walk around right after I'm done this video. What really prompted me to do this video, I had another one planned for you, but what prompted me to do it was because I'm thinking to myself, I'm traveling for the next two weeks for work, attending a lot of tech conferences, doing a lot of speaking activities, getting to meet some really influential people in tech and also working. I have my computer here. Uh, I mean, that is work, but other work as well. My computer, my I'm dealing with my clients and, and all that good stuff. So I thought today I would make this video kind of spontaneously because I feel really lucky to be able to freelance and do a lot of consulting work, run my own business, Tiff and & Tech, and I wanted to share with you some of the things I wish I knew earlier when I started my, my freelancing, my consulting career. This is really applicable to anyone who wants to become a consultant, wants to do freelancing of any type, maybe you're a developer, UI UX, designer, project manager, any of the above. These tips kind of apply to across the board, so I think they're gonna be really helpful for you. All right, let's just jump right into tip number one. Actually, before we jump into tip number one, I wanna give you a tiny bit of background. I have been working in corporate for eight plus years, and it was back in May, I think it was May, I decided, you know what, it makes complete sense for me to shift into uh, working with corporate instead of in corporate, meaning I consult a lot of the big tech companies uh, under NDA for a lot of them. So I'm just gonna say it's a lot of the Mang companies. It used to be Fang, now we're Mang. I know that's not a new thing, but I still feel weird saying Mang over Fang. Anyways, and it's, I love it. It's great, it's demanding. It's demanding, but it's the best in the best way possible. And that transition really came at a time where I was earning more than I could make in corporate. I, it made sense to get into more of that consulting uh, role, especially around freelancing as well, taking different opportunities. It just it felt right. So I really like it because I'm still very much in touch as to what's happening in the big tech world because I work with them just in a different capacity, which is pretty cool. Which really brings me to my first tip, which is understanding your niche. What are you bringing to these clients? That's the first thing you need to figure out before you even understand what clients you want or even maybe what you want to do. Now let me explain to you what I mean by that. What are you passionate about? What can you do if there is not a boss hovering over you that's saying, make these changes, do these updates? When you are a freelancer, the reality is you were on your own. And for me, that was a big change. I thought there's gonna be, it's gonna be seamless for me because I was already managing, doing freelancing, consulting, managing Tiff and Tech at the same time working in tech uh, at a company. And I thought, oh, it'd be no problem for me to manage my time. Honestly, it took me about a solid two months to figure it out. The first month, I honestly felt paralyzed. I thought, this is such a big change. I have so much pressure on myself that I was putting on myself unrealistic pressure. And the one thing though that kept me going was I knew my niche and I knew what I was passionate about. And for me, that was creating educational content, working with developers, still being a developer, and that kind of in a package. And that could really be through, mom, don't text me. Uh, that could be through many different kind of avenues, which I really like. So I knew I had a niche within tech as a general kind of contractor. And then within that different kind of avenues I could go, digital consulting, developer work, uh, making courses for companies, different things like that. The most important thing you need to establish is knowing your niche. And you can start by just picking one, but I would highly suggest being open to others, especially as you evolve. For me, that's the fun of it, is being able to kind of try a bunch of different things. Okay, coming in at number two, I know when I tell you this one, you're gonna be like, Tiff, I've heard that before, this is an original but just hear me out and because there is a good reason to it, which is you need to build your online presence and LinkedIn. I know, even when I say it, I just go, oh, I hate when people tell me that. I mean, I'm someone who posts my life online and I still do not like posting on LinkedIn. I do it because it's actually helped me land quite a bit of clients, but I don't enjoy it. It's weird and kind of cringy feeling. And I'm sure a lot of you watching this feel the same way about posting videos online or posting blogs online. Just putting yourself out there, it's scary and it feels uncomfortable sometimes. And I'm, I'm here with you. But the reality is the competition nowadays, especially for freelancing, is higher than ever. And if you want to stand out in any way, shape or form, you need to show up as an expert. And nowadays, whether it's right or wrong, us as humans equate experts to being able to show what they 
understand, what they are knowledgeable about. Now that's not always the case, but a lot of times when people are hiring for freelancers, that is the case. And there are so many different ways you can showcase your skills. You know, especially I know, I know I'm, I'm gonna say it, but through blogging or through even just doing text posts on LinkedIn. It doesn't have to be photo, it doesn't have to be video, or starting a newsletter. It's more so about just putting yourself out there, showcasing your skills so when people come and find you, they can say, hey, this person does have a background on reporting about whatever the topic is. They, they do know what they're talking about, it seems. And I'm gonna give you an example. Recently, I had a friend who was looking for a freelancer. They needed to hire a freelancer and we went on Upwork together. And I, I said to her, I said, well, let's just you know start sifting, seeing what stands out. And I noticed, I observed, the ones, the individuals she was picking were people who already had quite a wide range portfolio, but also had a lot of positive reviews and they had either a website that they could leave, in this case, the Upwork platform, and then she could go check out. That was really interesting to me because it was, well, a no brainer, but I think for a lot of people, they think, oh, you know, it, 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 they'll see once they hire me. We can't have that expectation. You really need to put yourself out there, show what you're capable of before you get hired, which I know is kind of contradictory. I hope that tip helped. I'm trying to be really honest here with this one. Coming at number three is what is your rate going to be? You need to determine your pricing strategy. And this one is tricky. I'm gonna tell you a tip that I, my manager did for me when, a long time ago and I still stand by it. Now some of you might not agree with this, some of you might, but it works, it works really well. Which is what he will do is, or what he did I should say is he's like, listen, if someone reaches out to you to hire you for building a website, for building an application, whatever the case is, proper client. I'm not talking your friend or family, uh, but if they reach out to you for this and you give them a price, like be reasonable, but be at the very high end of reasonable because they're not gonna say, oh no, you're too expensive, go away, I'm gonna go find someone else. They're gonna be like, you know what? That price is a little too high for me. What about this? There's gonna be a bit of a negotiation. They're not just gonna run away right away. And when I realized that, that as long as you're being reasonable, not like a psychopath, that you, what you put out there as your value, if someone wants to work with you, they're not just going to run away if the price is too high. They're going to want to talk about it and get to that medium happy ground. So that brings me to however you want to price your services, make sure you know your value and worth and then maybe add a little bit on because I'm sure you don't know even your full value and worth for, for how amazing you really are. Now there are a few ways that you can actually research as to what your rate should be. One of them being, if you are going to be operating on a platform, go see what the average is on that platform, like Upwork or um, what are the other ones? Fiverr I know is very popular. I mean, there's so many different ones. Those are just two examples. Another one is Toptal. Toptal is more so uh, really for all tech roles, but I believe you actually have to go through an interview process to even be accepted on the platform. But then in turn, you're paired with like, massive tech companies. It's a pretty cool platform from what I remember. So regardless of what you do, do your research to see what the median is based on when you are looking online, what platform you're going to be operating on. But then just add a little bit. Cause I'm telling you, you're not gonna regret it. People always want a deal, they wanna negotiate. So if you start high, you're gonna end up in a good place where you actually want it to be. Coming in at number four is the, the hardest part. If you've made it this far, I think you're, you're in good shape, but this is the biggest challenge, which is finding clients. Finding clients. Once you have found the client, the next big thing is to keep them, you know, keep them over time, secure them, which is actually easy if you are someone who is reputable, creating good work and responsive. Responsive is a big one because a lot of freelancers do not respond to the clients in a timely manner. So if you are responsive, automatically you get bonus points. I really believe that. The amount of times I hear from my clients, thank you Tiff for being so responsive. I appreciate your communication. It, it took me off guard at first. And then I realized that a lot of people in the freelancing world just treat it kind of like, ah, oh, I'll get back to them wherever I want. And it's like these people are relying on you. They're waiting on you. So that's just a side tip. Be very responsive. Going back to though, how do you find clients? Well, there are a few ways. One, like I mentioned earlier, by putting yourself out there on these different platforms, that is probably what I would do to start with. The other way is if you're comfortable with it, post on LinkedIn. I know it goes back to that, but I have found so many clients on LinkedIn by just through posting. And I mean, it depends on what you are doing, but even if you are building websites, apps, um, 
designing websites or whatever the case is, just put some recordings of, it doesn't have to be your face, not even a voiceover, but of yourself going through your work. It goes a long way. It gets a lot of attention oftentimes and can lead to more clients or client testimonials. That's another great way too. If you are working with a client, you can always say to them, hey, you know what? And you feel like you have a good relationship. You can say to them, hey, you know what? I really enjoy working with you. I am looking for a bit more work. Would you happen to know any other companies or friends of yours who are looking to hire? There's no shame in asking that. If anything, they will respect you for being so transparent and honest and in turn, you might get another client. This brings me to my last one, which is manage your freelancing time or your freelancing business like a business. Oftentimes you'll invoice late or not you, I know you wouldn't, but oftentimes people will invoice late or put things off really treat it like a side gig versus an actual business that they could make tons of money off of. And I find the way you treat your business is how it will treat you. And what I mean by that is if you are on top of accounting, invoicing, responding to emails, meeting those deadlines, in turn, those clients will keep on coming back to you. So if you are treating your business like a side gig, that's exactly what it will be. If you are treating it like a full-time job, I guarantee you it's exactly what it will be. I mean quit corporate so we can freelance to work less but end up working more i don't know but i'm much more happier with the freelancing consulting side of things running my own company but it is a lot more work i'm not gonna lie if you want to do it properly but really take the time to utilize the right tools quickbooks is a great one for accounting i find what else is there um i'm just looking at my notes here if you need time tracking because maybe you need to hire some other freelancers to help you support you with your freelancing uh, make sure you use a time tracking app. What else do we have here? Communication, Slack is amazing, or a messaging app. And what else? Project management I have here, Trello and Asana. Right now, I need to take my own advice because I'm using like the Notes app and it's getting kind of chaotic again, uh, but using a good project management tool. Honestly, the biggest hurdle with becoming a freelancer taking that leap to, or consulting or running your own business is, is th exactly that, making that leap. Believe in yourself and it's gonna be exciting when you first make that jump. It's, it's kind of like, this is how it went for me. It went really exciting and then terrifying. And then I just like froze for like a solid month, basically I couldn't do anything. I had to, because I had clients relying on me, but I didn't want to. And then it started coming back up like, okay, I got this, I can do this, this is, this is gonna be okay, it's, it's, it's gonna be okay. And especially nowadays, because I find not just in tech, but in the world, nine to five isn't really that much more secure anymore. It doesn't feel like that. So why not, if you're interested in freelancing or consulting, go ahead and make that leap. I believe in you. I know you can do it if this is something you're interested in. If you made it to the end of the video, it probably is. Let me know down below if you are interested in freelancing, what kind of area? Is it development, design? Is it QA, project management, consulting? Let me know and hit that subscribe button. Okay, now I gotta go walk around beautiful San Francisco.